I threw my wife's phone because she wouldn't stop texting. Story, still at the cottage and my wife isn't talking to me. It's not even our cottage, it's my parents, and we were supposed to be here to work on our marriage because we've been having issues. Not huge issues, but issues. Nobody's cheated or gambled all our money or anything, but she couldn't stop messaging her writing friend. All they do is talk about their characters or role play them with each other. My wife is looking for a serious career in writing, and she is a great writer, but this is literally just for fun. She's never going to publish this gay dark academia borderline fan fiction she's writing, and she knows it. This isn't my opinion, she said this. I mean, I would still be pissed with her working while we're supposed to be spending time together, but this is worse. I told her I wanted her to focus on me and our relationship, and she said she would. She's just had a new stream of ideas she can't control. Which again, I could excuse if this was publishable stuff, but it's just her and her friend pretending to be two university students in love. But I did something really crappy. I tried to initiate with her last night, and she rejected me. Which is fine, because obviously, nobody's in the mood all the time, but then she just went right on her phone role-playing these guys. I grabbed her phone and threw it out the window. The phone is fine. She has a good case, which I knew, I wasn't trying to break it, but she called me a piece of crap and a ton of other things and isn't speaking to me today. I know, no matter what, I'm the a-hole in all honesty. I'm just curious over whether this is an everybody sucks situation or not, and I have nothing else to do because she won't talk to me. Response 1, but it's just her and her friend pretending to be two university students in love. Everyone sucks here is more so though I understand the frustration but, but tossing the phone out of the window was a little over the top. Reply 1. Well, arguable. I used to do a lot of roleplay writing with a few friends and wrote a lot over time. More often than not, it was romantic stuff because it was just more fun to write about. As for us, there were usually a lot more entertaining ideas surrounding that. It was a good outlet for me. I loved writing and the feeling of getting into someone else's headspace for a bit. That said, in my experience, though it by no means whatsoever refers to everyone into RP, toxicity was commonplace, especially in large communities. Eventually, it got so bad that I ended up only ever writing with two good friends at the time. Good friends because I trusted them to keep the drama low and to value our friendship over writing. I was wrong. These two had many other issues, but it primarily had to do with RP and their expectations. After a bad breakup, I was at a real low point in my mental state, and at first, I dived right into RP Hardcore, just looking to escape my own headspace for as long as possible. When I started to get better and move on, and started dating the man I'm with now, I had less time to write. These two were constantly guilt-tripping me for not responding or contributing ideas when I said I was trying to work on myself and not my characters. That was not an acceptable answer. They manipulated me into thinking I was an a-hole for not using all my free time responding and said I was making their characters feel neglected. Keep in mind, they didn't feel this way. It didn't matter how much I talked to them, their characters felt neglected because I wasn't writing enough for their needs. There were many other problems between us, but this is what started it and what eventually led to them deciding that I was too millennial and they didn't want to speak with me ever again. In the middle of the night, after not talking for a while, I got a message from the one I was closest to that was a long-winded goodbye that made me feel like absolute shit for having my own life and trying to better myself. I cried for an hour because she was the closest friend I had ever had and I felt like my heart had been torn out. It took me a while and talking about it a lot in therapy to accept that they had very unrealistic expectations for me and I wasn't at fault. OP, I won't deny that throwing the phone was an a-hole move, but I understand your frustrations. If I were you, I would ask if she's being pressured by the other party to respond and discuss as often as possible. If not, maybe express that you understand this may be her outlet during an emotional time, but you'd really appreciate it if she could talk to you about it instead of throwing herself into someone else's headspace. I learned the hard way that though it may feel better at the moment, it doesn't help you heal in the long term. Reply 2. Also, just want to add, how is OP's wife emotionally? Does she have a mental illness? ADHD? RP is a guaranteed dopamine hit, and every response is another drop. If she's feeling depressed, she might be hyper-focusing on the RP because it's the only thing making her feel good. OP, you're not the a-hole. I'd have been frustrated as well, but maybe something else is going on that is driving your wife to obsess about this RP. Reply 3. 
As a former teenager who was neck deep in this sort of thing, and definitely using it as an escape dopamine hit to counteract undiagnosed depression and anxiety, yep, OP is not the a-hole. But if he really wants to save the marriage, it sounds like something they need actual couples counseling slash likely individual therapy for as well, not just an attempt at a couple's retreat to a cottage. That or go somewhere very remote with no cell service, no Wi-Fi, to guarantee no distractions. But if she's actually that addicted to it, like I was, a lot of others have commented here, she may refuse or just be very irritable while they're there. Reply 4. Role-playing romantic stuff when you're just platonic friends is very common. I did it all the time when I was 12, 13, and it turns out I'm aromantic as hell. The best way I can explain it is that most role-playing characters, with the exception of self-inserts, don't represent who the person role-playing them is. You tend to view them like an OC or a DND character and not me. There's a detachment there. So when doing romance role-play, it's not I'm in love with my friend, it's character A loves character B. It's like living vicariously through fictional characters. This same sort of thing can extend to erotic role-play, though it's less common, I think. I've never done it. Like getting off to the fictional character or the scenario rather than the real person. Granted, if somebody's doing erotic role play, there's more likely to be some sort of attraction at play. I'm not as familiar with that scene. I'm asexual AF. Reply 5. Not the a-hole. Creative writing aside, she agreed to spend time with you to work on y'all's relationship. She did not do so. She's emotionally cheating on you at the least. Yeah, it was petty to throw the phone, but what is worse than that is your girlfriend lying about wanting to salvage the relationship. Actions, dude. I have a passion for writing, especially creative writing. But, if the side hobby started affecting my relationship, I'd put effort into prioritizing my partner, with the assumption I cared about my relationship, that is. You can read all these comments about everyone's own personal experience with role-playing. Yeah, sure, but that still doesn't excuse her actions. If she respected you and your relationship, she would put actual effort towards it instead of empty words. Think about it, man. Good luck. Response 2. Everyone sucks here. You for the phone incident and likely misinterpreting intimacy signals and her for not being honest that she doesn't value the marriage. She's not into you. Reply 1. This. I'm a full-time writer and while it's easy to get a plot bunny brain, it doesn't require texting all of my friends. At worst, I tell my husband, hold on, let me jot this down and then turn back to him. I would never ignore him while on a vacation. That's rude, no matter what. It's understandable why this marriage is on the rocks. Reply 2. Just here to say that's not necessarily the case. I write and role play. It never means I'm not into my spouse. It just means I'm coping with something if I'm immersed in it like this. For some, it's a coping mechanism and a sense of control when we otherwise don't. It's also a huge hobby and she shouldn't be made to feel crappy for her hobby. However, it is affecting her marriage even when she's meant to be working on it. I get his frustration. Reply 3. That may be the case in your marriage, but obviously not in this situation. OP and wife are literally on this trip to the cottage to work on their marriage, but she's so obsessed with her fanfic and disengaged from her marriage that she's still working on it instead of her marriage. This relationship is dead and she's obviously not into OP anymore. Reply 4. A. It's either an escape for her from her marriage or it's more important than her marriage or both. Several people here seem to relate to the sometimes obsessive nature of roleplay writing. But the thing is, obsession is by definition not healthy. I'm not judging. I had fast food this past weekend, and that's not healthy either. The wife should be allowed her hobbies, of course. But once an obsession gets to a certain point, an argument can be made that it's probably better to back off from it entirely. That's her decision, though. I feel bad for the OP, even though he did do something scummy by throwing the phone out the window. Response 3. This may be an unpopular opinion, but I'm not even sure if I can call this ESH. When my ex and I were having problems, I suggested a getaway, not unlike the one you're on. He agreed to do it, but acted similarly to your wife, i.e. not invested in the slightest and spending a ton of time gaming online instead of, you know, spending time on us and the relationship. We didn't last because I was the only one, one being honest, two communicating, and three putting in the effort to fix, save the relationship. It sounds to me like you are in a similar situation and your desperation to make it work got the better of you, leading to you throwing her phone out the window, which, to be honest, my petty self dreamt of doing that to my ex's computer, lol. I'm sorry, 
but I'm not optimistic about the odds of your relationship surviving, even prior to you throwing her phone. Best of luck. Reply 1. This is a good perspective. I wanted to post something similar, that OP and his wife aren't compatible anymore and would be better apart, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. They already tried to make it work, and after trying, it doesn't work. She's glued to her phone, and he's, well, he threw her phone. But I would mark this as, everyone sucks here. It's just painful and cringe to read. Reply to, ouch, eerily similar to my last relationship. I was the idiot who didn't want to put any time into fixing the relationship and would just play games during a lot of the time. Obviously, it was more complicated than that, but I've spent a lot of time reflecting on that relationship and think I'm in a much better place now. Still, reading your comment took me back to that place, and experiencing those feelings again made me very sad and wished I had never hurt my partner that way. Reply 3, yeah. I definitely think you're right. The last year of my marriage, going through a divorce now, I didn't want to come to terms with how depressed the relationship was making me. So I lived on my laptop, watching YouTube or playing games, anything to keep myself from realizing that for years of it being a one-way relationship and I was putting all the work into it, I was seriously depressed and alone. For whatever the reason is, when someone disconnects themselves from the real world, it's a sign of something major. Now I may just be seeing it because I'm going through it now, but I have to agree, sounds of divorce, clouds coming. Response 4. I remember some years back, there was a huge dust up with a group of folks I know. This guy had a partner who was super into LARPing and she ended up hooking up with another LARPer. Super crappy, but what's even dumber is she claimed that she didn't have sex with him. Her character did, so therefore she didn't actually cheat on her partner. It went over as well as you think it would. So yeah. I'm calling shenanigans on her not having an emotional affair with you, bud. Role play or not, she's still having sexy emotional connections with other people, which is not great. And doing that while y'all are supposed to be figuring out your relationship is super crappy of her. I have to say, everyone sucks here for the phone toss, but I get where you're coming from. Reply 1. It's weird that everyone immediately recognized this as cheating, but when it's just written roleplay, all the comments are like, of course we aren't into each other. I mean, sure, whatever you say, but at the same time, maybe don't do that if your partner isn't comfortable with it. I thought I was pretty unrestrictive as a partner, but I've just learned about the concept of RP as a creative writing exercise. I can hand on heart, say with 100% certainty, I would leave someone for RPing romantic scenarios with friends especially if they were doing it instead of talking to me, but also just generally, it would not make me feel good. Reply 2. I've RP in the past. No, it's not automatically emotional cheating, any more than saying actors cheat on their spouses each time they film something where they're in a fictional relationship. The fact that she's prioritizing this friendship over her own marriage is the issue, not the concept of RPing. Reply 3. I never said it was emotional cheating, I said I would absolutely not be comfortable with it in any way, shape, or form. It's way more intimate than acting, particularly given large audiences in theaters or busy crews on set. Maybe as a group writing exercise with multiple people contributing, I could get past it. But two people, each with their own character, just writing each other a romance novel? That's a no from me. Whether or not you have any emotion about the RP doesn't really matter if your partner, whom you supposedly love, is super uncomfortable and hates it which I would be. Absolutely. Big fat red line, no. Nah, -huh. here's the door. Reply four, I mean, my best friend of over 10 years, roommate of eight, and I RP stuff via text discord all the time. She's ace, and I'm not remotely attracted to her in any way, but neither of us has the time or energy to actually write like we want to, whether it be fanfic or original stuff. So RPing is a way to get some ideas and creativity out. Sometimes that does include porn, just cause we both like writing it. IDK, to us it's not any different than sitting around the table for D&D and having romantic subplots with people who aren't your IRL partner. It doesn't instantly mean someone is cheating or having an emotional affair. However, the wife here definitely sucks just for not paying any attention to her husband on a trip with them. Response 5. Is this friend someone that she could be romantically slash sexually attracted to? If it was a casual text during the day, then I would call you the a-hole. In this case, Having her texting sexual content to someone after showing a lack of sexual interest in you is making me see red flags. Dropping her phone out the window is childish, but I don't blame you for being upset. This could be an emotional affair. Everyone sucks here, and good luck. Reply 1. Yeah, she could be. 
It does feel that way sometimes, but she gets really upset when I say it. I know they're just characters, but it feels really weird to know my wife is role-playing sex with another person. I've brought up emotional affairs, but she says it can't be because it's not them, it's their OCs. I don't know anything about writer culture, so it always feels like I'm being unreasonable, but I don't know. Reply 2, writer here. I refuse to do sexual role plays with any characters, original or fanfic, because, to me, it is emotional cheating. There's a lot of myself in my writing, and it makes me deeply uncomfortable to be writing things like that with anyone but my partner. Please, don't write off your feelings just because you don't participate in the same hobby. If it's bothering you, it's worth figuring out why and addressing it, probably with professional help at this point. Also worth noting, it almost sounds like borderline addicted behavior. Maybe something to look into slash ponder. Reply 3. I used to roleplay with my online friends in the exact same way your wife is, and if you're in a relationship, then it is emotional cheating. People will always use the excuse of, it's not us, it's our characters, but my experiences of writing roleplay erotica had an actual effect on me, both good and bad. If the other person's character was doing something I liked, it aroused me. If they were doing something I didn't like, it would make me feel gross or uncomfortable because that's exactly how it would have made me feel if it was happening in real life. People will get up in arms about this and deny it until they're blue in the face. But there is a kind of intimacy that's inherent with that kind of writing. And 9-10 times roleplay sex isn't happening for any kind of plot continuity. It's because the people writing it are getting hot and bothered about it. Granted, saying, it's not us, it's our characters, does have a grain of truth about it, because any feelings are usually directed towards the character and not the person writing for them. But it doesn't change the actual dynamic of one person writing smutty content that arouses the other person, and vice versa. ETA. Everyone sucks here, but your only fault was throwing her phone, and I'm sure you don't need us to tell you that there was a better way to address what was going on. Reply 4. I think it probably depends on the person. I don't do RPing online, but I have written with people, and I've known our peers. It seems like it's like anything else that involves any form of intimacy. Sometimes platonic and creative intimacy stay separate, and sometimes they bleed. IDK, even with the sexual stuff, sometimes people are RPing the character they're attracted to. This is suspicious, but it's not the only kind of RP relationship. Response 6. Listen, as a former huge-ass nerd that used to roleplay as characters over text with my exes, I can promise you, she's absolutely in the mood. In fact, she's extremely in the mood, just not for you. Sexual roleplay is extremely, you know, sexual. The amount of detail you can get into like that, it's like sexy, dirty talking with someone when you're away from them. It's very hot because you're still engaging with someone, physical or not. Yeah, don't throw away someone's phone. That's a really bad reaction because it can seem violent. Throwing crap is a great way to get a story turned against you really quickly. But what are your girls doing? Yeah, it's not writing, it's screwing, digitally, constantly. It's an emotional affair and what I would constitute the beginning of an actual affair. I'm not even going to give you the everyone sucks here ruling because you obviously didn't even realize what was happening. I'm sorry, man. Good luck. Reply 1. As a current huge ass nerd that role plays over text with friends, sexual RP is not always and automatically screwing. My partner of 11 years and I both RP smut with other people and neither of us is having an emotional affair. Do I find what I write with my smut buddies hot as hell? Hell yeah. Does it mean I want to screw them or leave my girl for a relationship with them? Hell no. Now, OP's wife probably is engaging in an emotional affair, but not because she's writing porn with someone else. It's because of her behavior with her husband and her obvious emotional disconnect from both him and the relationship. She could be writing the purest chaste domestic fluff or slice of life gen stuff with her RP partner, and her behavior here would still indicate a problem in their relationship. Reply 2. It sounds like something that is a boundary that varies between couples. You and your partner are fine with it, but it sounds like it's an issue for OP. I probably wouldn't be comfortable with it and would most likely set a boundary in relation to it myself if my partner were into RP. Reply 3. This is exactly what I was going to say. It's clear that OP isn't cool with the RP relationship that his wife has going on, so it's crossing the line into emotional affair territory. Some couples are cool with banging other people. Some couples aren't cool with even looking at other people. Both are acceptable. What has to be respected is the boundaries put in place by both people in the relationship. And if those boundaries aren't compatible, then the relationship isn't compatible. 
Clearly, OP and his wife need to seek professional help or just end it. Response 7. Everyone sucks here. Throwing things was never going to be the answer. Text role-playing erotica is something a lot of people would consider emotional cheating, especially when she's rejecting sex with you to engage in it. The fact you're upset with this is understandable and valid, but your response was not. The she's never even going to publish it stuff is very silly. Dark academia is very popular now, and depending on how they write, it's likely to be publishable and potentially popular. But the way she is choosing to engage is not all right. Reply 1, yeah. I agree. It was definitely wrong for me to throw it. I always felt unreasonable calling it emotional cheating because she keeps stressing it's the OCs, not them. And I just don't get it because I'm not a writer. But now, reading all these comments, I feel like we should have a longer talk about this where I hold my ground. Also, I didn't mean to say that I don't personally find it publishable, just that she said it's just for her. It's not publishable because she's not going to publish it. I'm not knocking the genre. Reply 2. Ah. Then yeah, if even she admits it's just for her enjoyment, I would definitely say, it doesn't matter that it's OCs. Wanting to play with mind dolls and calling it work instead of communicating with your spouse so regularly that it's causing problems isn't okay. There are certainly allowances that need to be made for writers. Halfway through a conversation, they will absolutely zone back in and realize they've been imagining an economic system that allows for magic or something, and they will get into planning rabbit holes with writing partners that it's hard to break them out of. But no, this is not that. Reply 3. It's the OC, not me. Not so simple. Writing means I get to pretend to be OC, but once it becomes role-playing, then two people are playing this game, and once I'm pretending to be my OC and you are pretending to be your OC, then we pretend that we're in love. We talk to each other, and we exchange words and feelings, and the lines between pretending and reality might get blurry. Writers rarely cheat with their fictional characters, but actors every now and then do start to date their on-screen love interest. Be careful with this, they are playing with fire. Response 8. Honestly, after reading your comments on this relationship, not the a-hole. Your frustration got the better of you in one moment, but if I made a move on my SO, they rebuffed me then started role-playing sex with someone else, I'd get mighty pissed off too. You've done your part to try and mend this relationship, but from what you've written, your wife has already given up. She needs to understand that just because it's their OCs that are having sex, how you feel is real about it and your feelings matter in this relationship. Good luck, buddy. You're going to need it. Reply 1. 100% this. Your frustration is understandable, still not an awesome reaction, because your wife is cheating on you. She even has a way that she can do it, right in front of you, that she's convinced you is normal. The only people defending her are people whom both parties understand or are involved with this activity, which makes sense as they can have proper boundary-setting discussions about it, or people who are actively doing the same things to their partners, counseling or ending it. This is not going to get better for you without a drastic change in her behavior, which from your comments seems unlikely. Not the a-hole. Reply 2. Yeah, I knew it was over with me and my ex when I wanted to initiate, but he didn't, and then I woke up later to him jerking off right next to me, watching porn. Sexual intimacy is important to a lot of people, so her completely ignoring you to then go do something else that was sexual is essentially her only caring about her own wants. I know it sucks, and it's very easy to turn to throwing the thing your brain thinks is the source of the problems, but the source isn't the phone, it's your wife. If this stuff has been ongoing, one getaway to a cabin is not going to fix your marriage. I'd cut your losses. Response 9. So at best, OP's wife is dismissive of their marriage and OP's feelings, and at worst, it's an emotional affair with her text pal. Like yes, I get that grabbing someone's phone and throwing it out the window is a childish and a-hole act, but this was a heat of the moment sort of decision made out of frustration. I feel like this is wildly different from a long-standing marital issue. It would be like saying, well, I spilled this glass of milk, but my wife burnt the house down, so I guess we're both to blame. Yeah, OP, you shouldn't have thrown the phone, but I usually reserve the ESH judgment when all parties share close to equal blame. I say not the a-hole and get some marriage counseling. Response 10, everyone sucks here, is right on the verge of not the a-hole. Throwing her phone was not okay, but I can't really blame you for getting to that level of frustration with her. 
You went on this trip to try to repair your marriage, and your wife continually demonstrated time and time again that it is just not as important to her as texting her writing buddy. This is not a good sign for your marriage. Take that as you will. Response 11. So the question you asked in the headline, YTA. But I'm going with everyone sucks here for overall context. A rejection followed by her going back to texting her friends in the larger context of being supposed to be working on the relationship. She's sending you a message. At this point, I think you should just clarify to your wife. So I'm hearing that you're done and you don't want to fix or work on this. Please agree, disagree with that statement and then provide whatever clarification you need because you've not stopped doing the thing that's been the biggest problem for us from my end since you got here. I can't tell if you have a problem or if you want to put this in my face so clearly that I can't help but get the message. So I'm asking, say the words. Response 12. Everyone only focuses on him belittling her hobbies when he has said she's a good writer, but also everyone ignoring this woman being so disrespectful and dismissive of her relationship with him to the point she's even cheating on him in front of him is so ridiculous. Some of y'all need to get your double standards checked out. I by no means agree with physical aggression, but she is in no way in the right either. OP, just get out of the relationship at this point. Trying to fix it will only be a waste of both your time and money paying for couples therapy. When it comes to a partner emotionally or physically cheating, it's just better to end the relationship. Without trust, a relationship is just a waste of time.